All right, good morning. Um, so I'm going to make this screen recording specifically for teachers who are trying to use Zoom. Um, so one of the first things that's really helpful is if you um, click on Manage Participants and you'll see that this sidebar will pop up, something you might want to do is mute everyone. And you can leave this clicked if you want them to be able to unmute themselves. So you can leave that checked. So what that does is if there's background noise in each person's room, wherever they are, um, it'll mute them so that you won't end up with all this extra noise. Um, so that's one thing that's really helpful. Um, and then another thing that you could ask students to do, or any of your meeting participants, is you can ask them to hover over the video of themselves and they can rename name themselves. So for example, here um, you see that's actually Simba, right? And then here um, we have a horse, a unicorn, and my dog Basil. So we'll just call that horse. And then here we have a seal. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually renaming people, which um, if you have younger students, then you can just do that yourself. Um, because what will pop up as their name will be like whatever the device is named. So it might be a parent or guardian's name, and it might not be the child's name that you want to appear there. Um, so that's Something that's really helpful is that little renaming button. Um, and then um, some other things I want to show you are um, if you'd like to record your session in Zoom, you can use that record button and then you can um, choose to record it to the cloud so that doesn't take up a lot of space on your computer. And then if someone's not able to actually be live with you in Zoom, but you want them to be able to watch it later, you can upload the recording to somewhere so that they can watch it later. All right, so some other things about Zoom. Um, you can um, share your screen. So say I want um, to do some demonstrations for students on what Zoom calls a whiteboard. You can share that. And then students will see whatever you draw or write here. So say you want to take some notes as a class. Um, notes can go here. Um, if you were um, wanting to do some drawing or maybe some um, math where you could use shapes, um, you could do that here too. Um, so that's the whiteboard feature in Zoom. Um, and then if you want to stop your screen sharing, you click this button up here that says stop share. Um, so you could also use that um, share your screen button. If you have um, a slide deck that you want all of your class to see, so, um, you know, you could walk them through that slide deck. So what you would just want to do is you'd want to have um, that slide deck open somewhere so that when you go to share screen, then you see how that window then came up. And so I'd click there. And then I would make sure it's on the one I actually want to be sharing. So I'd click into um, the slide deck. I don't know why that's not coming up. There it is. And then you could, um, you know, present it as if you were in class, talking students through whatever um, content and skills you want to be talking them through. Um, so you see the benefits of the screen share feature in Zoom is that you can share whatever is on your screen with students. Um, okay, so let me show you some other things. Um, another thing that folks will um, like to use is the breakout rooms feature. 
So there's two ways of using this. So this first way is you could just randomly divide the students into a certain number of rooms. So you see I have four participants here. I have Ellie, Seal, Horse, and Simba. So I could just randomly put them into two rooms and then there'd be two participants per room. You see that here, okay? Or um, a lot of times we wanna do strategic grouping. So if I want to do some strategic grouping, I could go to manually and then you see how if I click um, on breakout room one here and go to assign, maybe I want um, Ellie and Seal to be together. And then in breakout room two, I'm going to want Horse and Simba. Okay. And then when I open those rooms, okay, so the students will get invited to go to the breakout room. But if you have younger students and they don't accept the invitation, Zoom will still send them there. I think it takes 60 seconds um, for them to go to the room. Um, so let's see if that happens. Because you see how it's saying not joined because, you know, these are stuffed animals. So. Um, another feature you can use when folks go into the breakout rooms is if um, you want to add a discussion question for them to discuss, you can type it here in broadcast. So um, maybe you want them to talk about, um, you know, what was your favorite part of the reading, if they all had done a reading, and then you could broadcast that right? And that would um, then go into their breakout rooms. All right, so let's see. Um, and then another thing you can do once they go into their breakout rooms, you can, um, oh, actually, here's what you have to do. Um, Let's see. Um, you can automatically move them, actually. Here's what you want to do. Oh, no, that's moving them to the other breakout room. Hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to move them back. Hmm. So maybe there has to be some sort of joining. I thought I automatically sent them after a time. Um, we'll check into that. So a cool thing about the breakout rooms is you can actually go join one. So say you want to hear what Ellie and Horace are talking about, you can um, go join breakout room number one. Okay. Um, now let's see. Hmm. Let me try something else here. So I'm going to close all breakout rooms. Okay. So return to the main session. So what I want to figure out here is how to get Zoom to automatically send them into those breakout rooms because if you have younger students, um, then they might do what those stuffed animals just did and not join the breakout room. Oh, so here was my failing. So click move all participants into breakout rooms automatically because otherwise um, what happens is they would have to click to join, okay? So that's important there is that option button. So let's try this again and then open all rooms, okay? And so now they've all been invited to join and so now that I clicked that button, it looks like it sent them over automatically, okay? So now if I wanna hear what Ellie and Horace are talking about, I can join their breakout room 
Right, and then I sh should see Ellie and Horse in this breakout room. Okay, and it looks like Ellie is sharing some deep thoughts here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to now close all the rooms and bring them back. Remember, I can send them a message there. Okay. All right, so that's um, a good introduction to the breakout rooms. Okay. So now they all should be coming back within 60 seconds. Let me just show you um, some other quick things. I'm gonna unmute myself, okay. Um, and then one thing you can do if um, you need to like take a break from Zoom or if you just wanna stop the video of yourself, like you know, you need to fix your hair or something, um, you could click this button, stop video. Um, and on mine, I have um, a headshot of myself there, but if you don't have that, it'll just um, show like some Zoom logo or something, okay? Um, all right, so if you wanna invite participants, um, you can invite folks by email, but a lot of what I do is I will um, copy the invitation. And you'll see when you copy that invitation, it gives folks different options. It'll have your Zoom meeting ID that they could join, but then it'll also have these different options to like join by um, cell phone, which can be good if um, somebody wasn't able to, um, maybe they don't have fast enough internet to use Zoom itself, they can still listen in on the audio, which is great. Um, and so now you see that Everybody has been brought back into the room. Um, so let's see what else. Um, oh, the chat button. So chat is a really good feature in Zoom um, because students can send messages to everyone. You can send messages to everyone. And then you also can send a specific message to a specific person. So say I just wanna tell horse something and I want to say, um, horse, are you okay? It looks like you fell over there, right? Um, I could just send that to horse and then only a horse would get that. But you can also like do some chatting with everyone here. Um, and then if your students end up engaging in a really awesome chat here, what you can do is you can, um, oops, let's see. Um, oh, you can, have you can save the chat and it'll let you download the chat if you want to keep a record of um, what students chatted about and then you can have some features here so you can allow participants to chat with each other you can make it all have to be publicly or you can have it set as i did where everyone can comment publicly and privately okay so that's some quick stuff about the chat all right so I think those are some of the most important things about Zoom. Um, just to review, one of the first things I had mentioned is you're going to like this feature of muting everyone because um, that'll be really helpful. Um, some people like to have this chime play when people enter and exit. Um, only the host hears that, but I don't usually use it because it's um, a little annoying. Um, but that mute all button is very helpful so that you're not hearing everyone's background noise. Um, so I hope that was helpful and um, good luck with this big adventure we're all on together. Take care.